someday I'll finish my deck. I was out working on my deck and like I'm getting hit like it's raining. Spotted lantern fly. Yeah, Spotted lantern fly. And they're, they're just sneaky. They crawl up and all of a sudden you see them. And right now they call them instar stages that the spotted lantern goes through a series of instar stages and the last two are where it um, is a little creepy crawly thing where it's an orange it's orangey red and it's the fourth instar stage and that it's usually July to September and It's reddish with white spots and black markings. It's about a half an inch and it has a long snout and it like crawls really slow. And it reminds me a little bit of like a stink bug, like where stink bug is pretty stealthy. And that's what these were, but they jump on you without even thinking twice. I killed one with two by four. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know, I really, hate them. I hate them. them. <laughs> because not only that, uh-huh. then there's the, the, you know, there's the next stage where it's the adult spotted lantern fly. So Perhaps. we're getting, we're getting both. And that it's the one that has the, uh, I call it that the lingerie, lingerie look, look where it has that, you know, uh-huh. leopard coated white uh, <laughs> spotted <laughs> wings. And then it opens up and it has like this peekaboo red, part up by its uh, abdomen and it's like that's where it's actually a, it's a pretty insect but it's just pretty annoying because they're getting ready to mate <laughs> and that's the whole thing it's like you know we're gonna subdue the earth and it feels like they have they were subdued have. near my house I think I told you my mom my grandmother used to have a uh, an over jacket or overcoat that she used to wear just around outside when she had to go and get the paper and it looked just like a spotted lantern fly. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Like, <laughs> or they sell they sell clothes like that. Like I think it's called a moo or something like that. Something crazy. I don't know, man. <laughs> that wasn't quite what I was thinking, <laughs> but yeah. He said the lingerie looks well, so. <laughs> Hey, you know. It's like silk, man. Like <laughs> well, it's and again, it's it looks like a, a white leopard skin. A le- like because it has it's white. The wings are white and it's the majority of the body. It's it's and that they get to be, you know, two inches long. But, you know, it's amazing that they go from the, and again, it's called instar stages, and that it goes from that red color that they are now, and it's reddish orange, and then all of a sudden they're, as the big adults, get ready, (laughs) get ready, because you need to get rid of them. And one of the ways, but let me back up. You know why I have them? You got a neighbor? I yep. got a neighbor. He, he has tree of heaven growing in his, uh, I guess it's his hedge line. And it's really on his side. And I can't like go over it and knock him out. I really want to rip out all the hedges because it's mostly black, wild blackberries. And it's wild wisteria. And it's the used to be for Scythia. That was growing and hmm. all right we've got time for the story they were planted like you know how you plant to a hedge where they go odd and even so you go you plant one spaced and you put one in between it so that it fills in quicker and that was done with the first when they were filled in he decided it was a good idea to take the full grown forsythia that was grown on the closest ones to his property line and took them and dug them out with a backhoe and put them on the other side of his yard. And what that did is it let all this light in and all of a sudden all the weeds took over. They just took over. And uh, they were getting suppressed because of the shade that was being produced by the forsythia. But now there was all this light and they... (laughs) That's saying they grew like weeds? Mm -hmm. They grew like weeds. And one of the weeds that has grown is the tree of heaven. And that that is a host-specific plant to the spotted lanternfly. And it's a good chance that if you have spotted lanternfly, you have a tree of heaven. Now, um, a lot of times they look like sumac. Um, If anybody's used to sumac, 
uh, fast growing, uh, and and again, it's it's that they get where they're coated on it, and they're just attracted to it. We can trace the origins of spotted lanternfly to actually a pallet of stone that was delivered from China and that it was brought to a stone yard in Pennsylvania. And that's where they started. Jeez. And, and, right? Thanks, China. Uh, China. China. Um, and that, so what happened, it, you know what's funny? It's Japanese beetle, right? Mm-hmm. Or, they don't have Japanese beetle in Japan. <laughs> Boom, boom. It's true. I don't know. Anyway, back to Spotted Lanternfly. And so it's only a recent phenomenon and that it hasn't been as invasive as it, as it had been. Um, I think that natural predators, birds aren't looking at it anymore saying, what the heck is that thing? I'm not eating that. <laughs> you know, to where now that I've, I've seen, you know, maybe you've all seen the, the pictures or, or little reels on Facebook where it shows a praying mantis eating, eating a spotted lantern fly. I like that. That's cool. That's Pretty cool. Good. I could watch yeah. that all day. Do it. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when I had them crawling on me yesterday. I was like, I, you know, anyway. And that they do not fly. A lot of people think they fly. You know, when you chase them and they're leaf hoppers. And that, you know, it's like, you know, Sam, I forgot to, to have you find the Buzz Lightyear thing that we used in years past. Anyway, where it's not, where Andy, uh, what, well, who is it? It's, uh, what is the cowboy's name? In, in oh, Woody. 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 Yeah. So Woody is telling Buzz Lightyear, it's like, you can't fly. You can't fly. Oh, we you had know, that at one point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can't fly. Like, Spotted Lantern can't fly. They can hop with style. You know, that's like what Spotted Lantern did. And they can, because it took me two or three whacks to kill that, to kill that one with the two by four. <laughs> but in any case, we need to control this. We, because if it gets out of uh, control, it could be like locust. And the one way to do that is it's, it's time to start banding your trees. Do did you, did you understand that? Oh, oh yeah. Aaron shaved did, his head. Did your, did your neighbor do any of that? Anything with that, that no. tree of heaven? He didn't do anything? No. And this is what, going on how many years since the... I don't know, it grows removed? so fast. It's okay. probably two years. Two years, got you. Yeah. Yeah, so that thing is probably like... Yeah, oh, it, it's growing. Like yeah. I mean, I'm going to take my uh, reciprocating saw and <laughs> introduce it. To, to say, boy, yeah, how did it... How did, had, that must have blown over in the wind. All right. But it's an awfully clean cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it gets to that point. My neighbor's actually a, a decent guy. Gotcha. I don't know if he'd cut it down, but... <laughs> All right. Anyway, but uh, you need to band your trees. And the way that spotted lanternfly work is that... When they become adults, they begin to breed. Their breeding time usually is in September. Um, It begins in September. So we're getting close, folks. And that they climb up the tree and that they lay their eggs, which look like, it looks like mud. It looks like if if somebody wiped mud on your tree, that's what it would look like on the trunk of your tree. And that they'll do it on anything. We, We were... In our old studios in the building, yeah. they were laying their oh. eggs on the actual side of the building. And this was a marble building. And that, so they'll do it on anything. anything. But primarily yeah. their their focus is looking for a tree to be able to lay their egg mass. And if you can put the banding up, they need to climb up the tree that you'll catch the spotted lantern fly. Now... I've heard people have problems with banding where that they've had actual birds get that's stuck to it. it. Yeah, that's what it so here's what you do is you, is you put the banding on and you take some, uh, some chicken wire and you make it so that the, the spotted lanternfly can crawl between the holes of the chicken wire but you kind of create a, I don't know, like a covering that's separated 
from the tree so the spotted lanternfly crawls under it and gets stuck to it. And where the birds, they can't because they're on the chicken wire. So if you have it separated from that, uh, the, again, that the um, the sticky turtleneck, if you will, because <laughs> that's what it becomes, and that you put a like say a gap, um, so that it's a spacer, you know the birds can't get can't to get it, but the spotted lanternfly will crawl through it and still get stuck. Um, we need we need to keep this, and, and I think that a lot of, of our gardeners and, and listeners out there are being proactive because the amount of spotted lanternfly that we're getting now is less than we were getting, say, in 2020 or 2020, yeah. you know, 2020, 2022, like that. It, it's, But it's still there. They're still there. I feel like, sure. you know, populations yeah. are all over my house. I've gotten one. I saw one, and it actually... I, the only reason why we saw it was because it got stuck in a spider web on the side of my porch. And when Did I, you I watch the spider up, eat it? Well, I That'd mean, I didn't cool. see the spider. It was just there. Yeah. And we, it's still hanging there. I just saw it the other day. It's still hanging there. But it stopped moving? It's dead. It's, it's dead. dead, dead? Yeah, dead, dead. It right. hasn't moved. And, I mean, I, I try, you know, when the wind blows, usually, you know, they'll try to you know scurry around in it just to try right. to see it, it kind of jumps it, around yeah, and it gets it gets stuck, stuck more yep it, it it's gone no it's meeting its maker yeah maybe it's back in cruel, china somewhere it? i don't know it is cruel i mean <laughs> i mean that's I, all right it's a spot of lantern I, <laughs> kill it it's not i could have stopped it but it yeah. looked like it was it was already gone well if you've got one there's probably a few hundred yeah, more because one spotted lantern fly i think they lay 200 eggs and i was looking around my property i don't see any black Mud like, yeah. Well, that's, they're gone. Or... They hatch in spring. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't. You, you won't see that for another in a two months. I know a lot of uh, farmers are, are. They don't like the cold season unless they have cold crops, right? But when the first frost comes, that's usually the first indicator. Spotted lantern flies are gone for the season. Yeah. So that they can get yeah. killed by the cold. But once they lay their eggs, guess it's what? It's a know, wrap. They're there. They're they're not eggs. They're they're spotted lantern seeds. <laughs> Ooh. So basically, is. Um, so you can also spray, and again, banding will protect your trees. But when they're in this phase, and you can spray them, and what we recommend spraying them with are the thrins. Julio, am, am I am I going to stump you if I ask you what a thrin is? Thrin is an insecticide which is which has a, a property that uh, it's uh, it, it lasts longer than, than uh, the usual. It's a natural pyrethrin. No, it's it's based off of a natural right. pyrethrin. Right. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing about pyrethrins, even though they're organic and they do have a great list of, of insects they control. It has no residual. So it breaks down in sunlight. And it's made from, actually, uh, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum flowers. Yeah. And that it sprays it. You, you can kill it, but it's gone because if sunlight is getting to it. So it it's not the best. So, so what we did, and it's the science, folks. Here we go. Based on the chemistry of the pyrethrin, pyrethroids were copying copying the pyrethrin but made it so that it had a long residual. Uh, Penn State has been on the forefront of all of the spotted lanternfly information and their recommendation is bifenthrin get it? Thrin? Bifenthrin which is high yield bug blaster 2 by Fenthrin, 2.4%. That's high yield bug blaster two. And that contains by Fenthrin. And that's a spray, and that you will use it to spray your spotted lantern fly and a host of other insects. And it has a long residual. It's rated as the best by, again, that's by Penn State. There's also beta sulfurin, and that, that is also a great residual. 
There's uh, permethrin, another, see all these threads? That's Bonide has a product called Eight, and that's what the active ingredient is there. Um, you know, we've, we've really switched over from giving like, you know, cutesy names, like it's bug killer times two, you know, to where we're using active ingredients. And, and folks, if you can follow along or, you know, just just record or bring the podcast to your local garden center and look, this is what they're saying to get. Because sometimes it's hard to say. It's hard for us to say by fentrin. Probably took me two years to figure out what they were saying. It's bifenthrin. No, it's by fentrin. And again, that we we dumbed it down by saying thrin. So so if you're looking on the active ingredients and you see thrin, any of the ones that are not organic are going to be great. They're going to do a good job. The natural options, you do have organic options. But again, the problem is, is that there's no residual. So going with pyrethrin, okay, this is the original, the one made out of poinsettia flower, or poinsettia flowers. Boy, you got me thinking of poinsettias for some reason. Mm-hmm. It's all because of prof- Professor, Professor Steve. Steve. Yeah. You got me thinking Christmas, Christmas already. <laughs> that uh, it is made from chrysanthemum flowers. Uh, but again, sunlight, no residual. Spinosid, spinosid. Remember, we talked about that last week, but spinosad is the one that where it was found in a rum distillery and that it was in the 80s. So it's a fairly new technology. It is organic. Uh, and then again, it, the probably most popular one is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. But be careful because Bonide has, am I allowed to say this? Sam, am I allowed to say bastardized? Yeah, you can they, say that. That's fine. Yeah. They bastardize the name of Captain Jack's. It's like, we're going to put it on weed control. We're going to put Captain Jack's weed control. Captain Jack's. I hate it. I hate it. You know. Yeah. Triple action hole. Triple action. Another organic. Oh, great stuff. It has neem and pyrethrin. Both. So again, neem is going to gonna coat the, the insect and the pyrethrin is going to work. Again, it's not that long of a residual. Banding is something that you should do just simply because it will help control the population that way. If they're just annoying you and you want to spray them, you can do that as well. I suggest doing both, not one or the other. If you have significant spotted lanternfly and you're seeing them now, they're only going to get worse because they have not reached that adult stage. One of the most annoying parts is, is that they crap on everything. And they have what we call honeydew. And it like, you want your your patio furniture turning black? That spotted lanternfly, it'll do it. It'll do it. Control that spotted lanternfly. Don't just brush it off. This is something that uh, in the agricultural world that it is a concern and that uh, you need to take care of it. So go after those spotted lanternfly. 